All right, so right now we're going to work on this first aid medical kit in 3ds Max. And uh, we are creating a box in order to kind of uh, create a starting point from which we're going to continue and build on. So um, uh, probably here uh, this start sometimes is kind of a little bit um, interesting and you're, you, we're going to try to figure out how we're going to do it. Probably I just detached uh, that surface right there and um, yeah, we're going to see how we are going to uh, work with this. So uh, probably this is not the best approach so um, let's see if this is gonna be something uh, we are gonna do anyways all right so uh, I, as I detach that uh, I'm trying to scale it a little bit in order to actually give it some space because the cap and the case are kind of separated in in a sense so right now we are chamfering the sides because it is very smooth uh, in the sides and it is really not that uh, the uh, the edges uh, are not that hard. So uh, I got, I got rid of that cap and I decided that this one here is going to be rep re replaced by the case but inverted which is um which kind of keeps things very close uh and very uh similar as well to what we have in our reference images. So, uh for for this case here things are going to be uh, simple and um, we're not gonna try to over complicate stuff so much because it's not gonna be that complicated and the shell modifier as you can see here is a, a very good modifier in order to add thickness to our surfaces here and also the um, you, you better add the uh, the thickness to the inside in order to avoid any complications on the outer surface right now I'm trying to create the handle and using this cylinder I'm going to create the parts that are going to be attached to the surface of the case. So uh, bear with me here because we're deleting lots of polygons in order to only use the, the surfaces or the polygons that we need. So uh, here we are, we just, I just extruded this, keep holding shift all the time to do this. And uh, it seems like these two pieces are kind of separated and too far from each other. So. What we're going to do is right now is uh, we're going to try to align it manually because um, uh, ma alignment is not that important right now because we are trying to focus on creating the geometry and as you can see keep holding shift to extrude that edge and we'll delete a few of these because I want to duplicate it using the symmetry modifier so uh, use the symmetry modifier from the list choose the right axis and we get something that looks like this so instead of creating the two or both sides uh, two times we're going to create once and use the symmetry modifier and then adding the shell modifier here as you can see is going to allow us to give it some thickness even though the shell modifier is not perfect it is really great for doing these kind of stuff so uh, i duplicated this piece to the other side as as an instance and right now we're going to use a line in order to create uh, the handle. So create this line that looks like this and make sure that it um, is going to fit inside these two pieces for now and also it seems like um, the handle is a little bit bigger so separating these two pieces a little bit was something I had to do and also here uh, we're going to make sure that we are, we're going to reposition it perfectly or as, uh, as as much as we can and here we are trying to use the uh, the fillet tool from the it is blind in order to create nice curves so this is going to translate later when we activate thickness in the viewport as you can see right now and then we're going to try to use or actually um, assign a um, an acceptable and a, a logical thickness here because we don't want it to be too thick or too thin alright so adjust things a little bit and we're gonna change the color of these surfaces and also change the material a little bit or change it from the uh, material editor and from the keyboard 
duplicate these as instances to the other side because we have two sides if you haven't guessed yet and uh, mirror it using the mirror tool and kind of align it somehow on that surface. All right, so we're going to do some minor adjustments here. We're going to add um, two lines right there because I want to smooth th things out a little bit. It seemed like it was um, kind of too hard. And um, right now, we're not going to worry too much about that piece because uh, we are probably going to change that later. Okay, right now, um, in the front side, we're, we are creating here what we call, uh, it has a special name, it's uh, some sort of hinge, or I don't really remember the name, uh, I'm going to figure out later what that is. So, actually hinges and uh, locks have different names depending on kind of their function, and the, there are so many of those, and uh, they have specific names and uh, they, they're named according to their function so uh, probably in the naming process I'm gonna remember what that is because I'm gonna search for some of that stuff so for now this uh, this is gonna be uh, the surface that we're gonna need and uh, we're gonna extrude that edge here in order to uh, create the the shape that we're looking for so it's, gonna, it's, it's not that it's not that complicated because this shape here is very simple and as you can see we're, we're just creating a few lines here and in order to uh, get something similar to what we can see in the reference image. Also this piece here needs to um, needs a shell modifier after we finish creating the overall shape that we are looking for. Just chamfer that line right there in order to create that nice curve. We could have done that using multiple me multiple methods but um yeah in order to keep things simple probably the the um the chamfer tool right there is going to be good enough all right apply the shadow modifier in order to add some thickness all right try to align it to against that surface All right, convert it to Arab Poly, and uh, right now we're gonna also add a box, uh, because this is gonna represent the other piece here, and this one here we're gonna adjust it a little bit because it looks like a box initially, but it is not, it's not gonna stay that way. So uh, we're gonna delete some some polygons here, and we're gonna start adjusting. All right, so uh, we're going to extrude this edge right here. Keep holding shift in order to do this. Do it a second time. And also, this is not going to stay as it is because uh, we're going to change it in a few minutes. So here we're going to try to add some details. For example, the top of this piece, this kind of has a curve uh, on top. So we're going to duplicate this line a little bit. And... Um, as you can see, as we lift these edges, we kind of create we are kind of creating that nice curve. All right, so uh, we're gonna try to separate these because uh, we want that curve to be nice and clean. All right, connect these edges and add two separate lines or separate. Uh, sets of ads and we're going to right now also we're going to adjust the position of these two vertices in order to create that that round um, end right there and um, as you can see the our overall shape or the silhouette is is, is subject to change depending on uh, the proportion we need uh, in relation to the other pieces so 
here we are adding the shadow modifier because we need some thickness, obviously. And this um, this edge right there uh, is not really that sharp, so we needed the uh, to add or to apply or to use the chamfer tool in order to smooth it out a little bit. Also, right now we're gonna go to shapes and we're gonna add the line because we need some uh, we need that line in, or, in order to create the piece in between. So. We're going to try to create a line that kind of creates, uh, goes almost for almost full circle. All right, we just aligned the um, those vertices in order to keep things uh, in place and aligned perfectly. Also here, we uh, enabled rendering in viewport because we want to see the thickness of this piece, which is important. All right, so um, we want these uh, vertices here or these corners to be smooth, so we needed to use the fill -out tool from the editable spline and uh, convert to editable poly in order to be able to uh, adjust it or adjust the polygons. Alright, so I think right now we are kind of done with the uh, the basic modeling and right now we're going to start working on the high poly. So to work on the high poly, first of all we need, uh, we need to actually connect some of these vertices because we cannot keep them as they are or if we, if we do, we're going to have to be a little bit careful because uh, when using the smoothie modifier or, or the turbo smooth, uh, things are not going to work properly if we are not careful. So, um, we added the shadow modifier, and right now, in order to create a high poly version, we need to apply support edges, the support edges, and apply the turbo smooth modifier in order to smooth it as best as we can. Uh, this is important because uh, the the high poly version needs to be polished and smooth and everything because we need to, the uh, the details to be baked on the low poly later.
Alright, so I forgot to actually create the layers for the high poly and the low poly. So uh, we are creating right now two layers, one for the high poly and the other for, for the low poly, of course. Uh, because this is extremely important, to be honest. This is very, very important. And um, if we don't do this, we're going to have to do the work twice, which is not something I would like to do. So uh, we just copied a version of this and um, uh, created a layer for it. And now we are ready to work on these layers separately. All right, so we're going to make sure that all these pieces are going to be supported properly because um, this is important. As you can see, I'm using the cut tool in order to connect these vertices together. And when we're done, we're going to use uh, we're going to use the swift loop in order to do some manual support on the edges. Uh, there isn't too, actually too much to say about the process of adding support edges. So, uh, because it's a, it is actually something simple, something that you can do on your own if you know the basics. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's it is kind of something self-explanatory, something that you actually learn just by doing it and by looking at how it is done. It has, it hasn't, uh, it has no theory behind it. That's why it is kind of simple. And I actually learned how to do um, this process. I've seen it only once. Uh, I've seen, uh, I've seen it in action once, and after that, I was able to figure figure out the rest on my uh, on my own. Because it was so simple and very clear, and and uh, and it has only one purpose, and it is very direct, and uh, um, no tricks, no 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 complicated stuff. Just um, yeah, just straightforward operations. One purpose, and one or two tools, and you're ready to go. So this is it for uh, this part, and we are done right now with the high poly. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're not on YouTube, you can actually check uh, the other uh, the other parts of this of these tutorials I'm creating here on YouTube on Patreon because you know that um, things are not simple these days, and actually I want this thing here to be. Uh, successful and I want to keep doing this in the long term because I've created so many tutorials in the past and I just I don't want to stop because of um, 
because of things happen all the time and one of these things is that we need to um, we need to keep our efforts kind of um, somehow I don't want to say profitable but I want to keep things working because at least we want to see some return on, on this investment here actually the money I'm getting here is nothing compared to uh, the joy and the fun I'm having here thank you very much